In this video, we're going to do the first part of section 3-2 out of your textbook, which starts on page 56. Um, what this little exercise does is continue on with this uh, alien encounter program that we have been writing. <coughs> so I'm expecting you to have Alice open and to have this program up to the point where we finished it off last week. And if you've misplaced this particular one, you can download a copy from the course database. And so far in this program, <clears throat> excuse me, um, our, f our commands in our program, our lines here, if we take a look at each of these, go along sequentially. So first, alien on wheels moves up one meter, then the alien says slisty toes, and then the neck turns around, and etc. like that. But each one goes one line at a time. Even in these do-togethers, I know more than one thing happens at the same time, but again, it, 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 the program's looking at each of these in order. But one of the powers in a programming language is the ability for a program to change the path that it's going to follow, to do different things depending upon what goes on. And this, uh, what goes on inside the program. And when you give a program the ability to start to make its own decisions, in effect, uh, what you're introducing is something what we call control structure. So in this one, we're going to look at a control structure called the if-else control structure. And first, I just want to talk a little bit about what it does, and then we'll just add an if-else to this particular program. So this little chart here kind of gives the idea of what this does. An if-else statement, the first thing it starts off with is a question. And this question has to be a true or false question, a question that's uh, either going to be true or it's going to be false as a result. So there's going to have to be some sort of a condition. We'll get into this in a little more detail in a second. If the condition is true, then a certain action will be performed, and you can specify what that action will be. If the condition is false, it will do something else. And then the program will continue on its merry way doing whatever it is. But the thing to realize is it's either going to do this, or it's going to do this, but it won't do both of them. Okay. So let's add an if-else structure into our program. So. What are we going to do? Well, let's see. We're going to go through our program here. And there's a point where the spider robot moves up to the alien on wheels. And then the alien goes down. It's at this line right here, where the alien goes down one meter and disappears behind the rock again. What we're going to add in is a line that the robot, if the robot is shorter than the rock, then the robot will no longer be able to see the alien. And what we're going to want to do is for the robot to lift its head up and look over the rock at the alien. However, if the robot happens to be larger than the rock, then there's no reason for the robot to lift up its head, and it doesn't need to do anything at all. It can still see the alien, even though the alien has ducked back down. The thing is, it's kind of hard in our program to tell. Is the robot larger than the rock, or is it not larger than the rock? But that's OK. We can ask that, pro that question of the program. So the first thing we want to do is drag in an if-else into the line right after the alien moves down. And these control structures are found down here at the bottom. The third, We've already done the do in order and the do together. And the third one there is an if-else. So we're going to grab that, and we're going to drag it. And again, pay attention to that green line to the point um, right after the alien moves down. And I would always suggest starting this on true. You can start it on false or true, but to be honest, no, put it on true. <laughs> Make it a good habit to put it on true. OK, next thing. Next thing we want to do is we want to ask a question. We need to put this something into this to ask a question that could be either true or false. Okay. And our question is, is the spider robot shorter than the rock. And we know to ask questions of it, we have to use functions. Right? Functions, remember, is something that you ask of an object, and it returns an answer. So this is a question to be asked to the uh, spider robot. So I'm going to select the spider robot object right there. I'm going to go down to the functions tab, click on that, and I'm going to take a look at all these functions. And what I'm interested in is, is spider robot shorter than? So we're going to scroll along. So let me zoom out. I think it's easier to see. Is shorter than? And there is a question right there 
that says exactly what we want. Is spider robot shorter than? So we're going to drag that in to where it says true. So we're going to replace the statement true with that. And again, it goes green when you get it in the right spot. And then it's going, well, is the spider robot shorter than what? And I, I'm interested in, is the spider robot shorter than the rock? So I'm going to collect that. Okay. So now we've asked the question, is spider robot shorter than the rock? Then we have to put in, what do we do if that condition is true? And then what do we do if that condition is false? If that condition is true, we want the spider robot to lift up its head. Okay, and the way we're going to accomplish that, well, this is going to be a method now. We're going to get the spider robot to do something. And actually, zoom out a little. I'll scroll up this way. I only want the head to move up, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to select the neck and move up just the neck. If I move up the neck, the head's going to go with it. Okay, and what I want to do is I just want to move it up, and I'm only going to move it up 0.2 of a meter. So I'm going to drag that in. I want to move up. 0.2 meters is not one of my options, so I have to select other. I have to type in 0.2, say OK. I also want this to happen more quickly. So instead of it doing it in just one second, I'm going to change the duration to half a second so it happens more quickly. Okay. Now, obviously, we don't want the spider robot's uh, neck head to be stuck in the up position. We also have to move it back down after we do that. So I'm going to do the same thing. Spider robot neck, move it down 0.2 meters. And again, I want to change the duration to half a second. Okay, we'll zoom out. So now we have our conditional statement in there. The else we're going to leave is a do nothing. Very often in some of your programs, we'll keep working with this, you'll be putting something in for the else. But I'll, we want to show that um, doing nothing is an option as well. You can leave that blank. So if the spider robot is, is not shorter than the rock, nothing's going to happen at this stage. And then after that, regardless of which of these two conditions it does, it's going to continue on and do the rest of the program. So let's play this and see how it plays out. Okay, so there's the slithy toes, spider robot moves over, and we can see, oh, the head did go up a little bit. You can play that just one more time if you want to, so you can zoom right in so you can get a good look at it. But watch the neck when it comes to the rock. It did move up, so that told us actually the spider robot was shorter than the rock, so it ended up doing the true part of the if state. Okay. That's perfectly fine, but I want to actually do something else with it. I want to show you other types of questions that you can ask. So we're going to do a second part of this. Um, I'm going to take this part here. I'm going to take it out. I'm going to replace it with something else. I'm just. I'm going to keep all the the programming part, commands part in there. I'm going to change the question. Okay, that condition. And what we want to talk about is something that, in computer jargon, we call relational operators. Okay, and um, to f and to find our relational operators, we have to go to functions. But this isn't the question we're going to ask of a specific object. We're going to ask this of the whole world. So we have to click on world, a little bit not too obvious where this is, and then click on functions tab. And I'm interested in here, and these are things we can ask about the whole world. One I'm interested in are these math ones here. This, these in computer jargon are called the relational operators. And if you go on a computer language uh, programming, um, you'll find that th these might vary from programming language to programming language exactly how you type them, but every programming language has the exact same ones. And in fact, the ones that are here are exceedingly common. They're based on some very common uh, programming languages that exist right now. But what I want to do zoom in on this, is talk about what each of these mean. And a lot of these actually, most of these are already pretty familiar to you from your math class. Okay, Like for instance, you should be familiar with the greater than symbol. Okay, So what this is doing, I'm, look, I'm looking at the, uh, the third one, is this is asking the question, is A greater than B? If the answer to that question is true, it's going to do the true part of the if. If the answer to that question is false, it's going to do the else part of the if. Okay. Greater than or equal to, remember these have to be things that in a, in a normal uh, programming language you'd have to be able to type on your keyboard. So the greater than or equal to looks like this, a greater than and then an equal right after it. Okay. Then there's a less than, same idea, is A less than B, and then less than or equal to is A less than or equal to B. Now let's zoom up to the top one. The double equal sign stands for the word equal. Is A equal to B? Is it exactly the same? True, can do the true part. False, then do the else part. 
Okay. Uh, I know it looks a little weird why the double equals. That's because actually the single equals means something else in programming language that I won't get into now. But for now, just double equals means equals. The exclamation mark with an equal after it is the word not equal to. Exclamation marks become a common symbol in programming languages to represent the word not. So if you ever see an exclamation mark in front of something, it means not that. So this is asking the question, is A not equal to B? And if that's a true statement, in other words, A is not equal to B, then it's going to do the true part. If it's false, then it'll do the false part. Okay, so now that I've got all that, zoom out. I know that's a little bit confusing. You'll get used to it. Okay, I want to ask the question, is the spider robot less than two meters tall? That's what I want to change this question to. So here's how I'm going to do it. First of all, I need to have a less than in there. So I'm going to scroll over to these relational operators, these math operators, and I'm going to pull over the less than, put that into the truth. Boom. Okay. And then it's going to ask me to put in some numbers. All right. Well, I'm going to just put in a 1 because I'm going to replace that with spider robot. That's for the A. The B actually I do want to be 2. So now it's asking the question, is 1 less than 2? Ask yourself, is that a true statement or a false statement? It's a good thing to ask yourself right at this stage. I hope you're recognizing that's a true statement, right? 1 is definitely less than 2. So if I play this, it should do the true part. It should move the neck up and down. I'll do this as a little bit of an experiment just so you can see it. So I should see the neck go up and down when it goes to the rock, and it did. Okay. Notice what happens if I change this to a false statement, like if I change the 2. Now I'm just playing around. You don't have to do this. And change it to a 3. Is 3 less than 2? Well, that's not true, right? That's a false statement. So it should do the else part, which is to do nothing. So now, if I run my program, I should see the spider robot not move its neck up and down when it gets to the rock. And that's exactly what happened. So a little bit of an understanding on how these ifs work. Anyway, I don't want to have a number there. I want to have spider robot's height. So I need to ask the question of the spider robot, how tall are you? What's your height? That's the thing I want to go in there. So I got to select the spider robot object. I got to go to functions and I got to find spider robot's height. There it is right there. I'll zoom in. And I'm going to drag that function in for just the three. Oops, I don't think I got it. There we go. Just for the three. Boom. So now we got the question, is spider robot height less than two meters? If the answer to that question is yes, it's going to move its neck up and down. If the answer to that question is no, then it's not. I don't know if the spider robot's less than two meters, so let's find out what happens. We'll run the program. Zoom in there. And again, what we're looking at is what does the neck do when the spider robot gets there? Oh, it does go up, so the spider robot is less than two meters. All right. Okay, so what I want you to do is to reconstruct this in yours, save the file, send that in, that's your assignment for uh, this particular one. All right.